Welcome to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Circle, the simple and AI-powered rewards and recognition platform for employee engagement. If you're just starting out in the workforce, you might have already realized that there are multiple choices out there in each profession. And moving forward, these choices are also going to expand. Of course, people and machines will have to collaborate in the future of work to accomplish tasks that neither can perform alone. So what new jobs are going to be produced in the future that isn't available now? What can we do to get ready for the future of jobs? What skills or talents will be required? Let's know everything in today's episode. I'm your host, Shushmita, and today I have with me Christian Wetter, who is the CEO and co-founder at HR Forecast, a German HR tech company. Christian is an HR tech expert with a focus on cutting-edge technology like AI and big data. Welcome to the show, Christian. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Thanks for having okay. me. Okay. Thanks a lot for joining me here, actually. Okay, so we'll start with the topic today, but before that, uh, it would be great if you can brief us about your corporate journey, Christian. We'll do so. Um, So first of all, uh, I started studying when I was 18, and at the same time, I already entered my journey in the corporate world uh, when I started working at Siemens, which is one of the largest German companies, right. as a as a dual study student, which is something some some very special German thing where you study at university while you work at the same time. And um, the great op- opportunity was that I was able to see many, many different departments in the first four years while I was still at university, went from controlling to finance to sales, but I was always the number-driven guy. I never really had the chance to look into HR departments. Um, and then after finishing my studies in 2010, the idea of HR forecast came up and mm. it w- took us four more years of thinking and developing before we decided to leave HR forecast after I've been with uh, Siemens for then quite a long time and different functions I went on to do to work with HR Forecast in 2014. And since then, I've worked with hundreds of mostly large cap organizations. Wow, great. Okay, um, so the topic today, as I already mentioned, is the jobs of the future, what trends we can expect, right? So my very first and obvious question to you is, do you think jobs of the future will remain the same as today? Uh, Definite answer is no. As we speak, they change or they are changing already. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in the end, it's all the time, the same news all over again. Um, there, are, there are these studies that you read nowadays uh, talking about how 20, 30 percent of the jobs we know today will go away. Uh, and this, at the same time, 20, 30 of, of new jobs will evolve. And to be honest, this could also be a newspaper um, header in, in, in the 18th century or whatever, because already back then, technological advancements have led to development of new jobs. So it's basically the same since the introduction of the steam engine, but the speed the speed of it is really increasing rapidly. Okay, so Christian, how relevant do you see the conventional jobs of today in the future? I believe many, maybe even most of them will remain highly relevant, hmm. but there's, there's something to it. So one example, let's take the automotive engineer that job has been around for, I don't know, 100 years probably, maybe a bit more. Um, and it's the, we still call it automotive engineer today. But if you look below the title, you would see that 100, 100 years ago, the job was purely mechanical, all about mechanical skills. Right. And later on, it got electrical into electrical engineering and nowadays an automotive engineer is very much similar to a software engineer so Mm -hmm. i really don't like like to talk about how jobs will remain relevant because they're just titles but it's really about the skills Mm -hmm. and skills obviously are under continuous change Mm -hmm. so to answer your question i would say the jobs might keep the same name but the relevance of skills will rapidly change Yeah, we'll talk about skills. I have one question prepared for you in that. So before that, I would like to know uh, what, according to you, are the factors that uh, are going to fuel the change? Um, So what we discover is that in all all the industries today, they're undergoing some rapid changes. It's all driven by the internet and new business models that come with it. 
And even if you look at very machine heavy uh, in industries such as pharma or chemistry or people heavy industries like professional services, they're all now changing and the fuel is digitalization or let's say the digitalization causing the need to rethink business models. And then we talk about again, digital mindset, digital skills, but it's not only about tech, it's of course also about much more. Right, right. So um, uh, Christian, can we expect some new job sectors? Like are there any new jobs that you think would be coming up in the future? Well, um, yes. Because now I mean, uh, people um, uh, people say that it's time of automation and it's the time of artificial intelligence and, you know, man uh, manpower is going to reduce in the companies and everything. So in that case, is there a chance of you no know, new jobs coming up? Yes. Um, I mean, most of these jobs or the topics you talked about, they're already there, but not to a large extent. So we do already see blockchain engineers, we see IoT specialists, we see uh, even sales automation engineers. Mm -hmm. So we see all that going on on the labor market when we evaluate job postings. But um, I think in the next years, these these jobs will be uh, hired on a larger scale than today. So there will be new job families developing. Currently, when we look into companies, job architectures, they would usually put all people that work with data somewhere either in IT or, or wherever. But in the end, I mean, these these are, will be massive job families with mm -hmm. yeah, large pro proportions of the people working in them. So I guess uh, everything around handling data and being analytical minded, th those will be the most new jobs uh, that we can expect for the future. But that doesn't mean the old ones will disappear. Okay. So uh, just a few minutes back, you spoke about skills and talents that it will it will require some new skills and talents to be in the market, right? So I mean, what are the skills that the jobs of the future will demand according to you? Yeah, we've, we've done some um, studies on that actually, uh, a data-driven study by analyzing millions of job hostings out there in the world. Um, and it doesn't matter which industry you look at. In the end, we see two main mainstreams basically going on out there. So one of them is that soft skills, despite all this technology we have around us, soft right. skills are becoming increasingly important in demand. Mm -hmm. So uh, right. whether it's creativity, um, whether it's analytical mindset, all these th things, networking, they are really yeah. important. Mm -hmm. And the other one are, of course, the, the deep tech skills. And um, what we believe is that the most successful companies in the future will not be the ones that will either hunt for only soft skills or only tech skills, but the ones that manage uh, fusion skills the best. So the skills on the interface between people and machines. Okay, great. I really like that answer. So yeah, coming to the next question, uh, how do you think the uh, Gen Z needs to prepare themselves from the jobs of the future? Uh, I don't think Gen Z needs to prepare much, but it's more the employers, the corporates, the companies okay. need okay. to prepare. Because, okay. um, I mean, we're all humans. It doesn't matter whether we are Gen Y, Gen Z, and we are adopt super fast to changes. Humans have always adopted very, very fast. Otherwise, we were extinct. Um, so I think it's less the people, but more the companies that need to um, change and of course there were some gaps uh, if we if we look at the, the way um, we behave with maybe a bit too social media heavy or less um, <laughs> less active in the real world also driven by the uh, by the pandemic but I guess um, this besides some good education that not, must become more speedy and more agile I guess mm -hmm. everybody would be always ready and prepared okay yeah so Again, how according to you are the HR, you know, the HRs, how does they need to prepare themselves for the jobs of the future? Yeah. So since HR is part of the corporate I've been just talking about, or the company, the employer, I see a much more need to change or to get prepared there. So um, I think HR of the future will be much less administrative. It's going to fade out and um, strategy, anticipating and planning is going to be on the winning side. We already see that again in the job postings um, where we see much less need for administrative jobs while there are really a range of new analytical and strategic functions popping up on a large scale. So HR must become data-minded or digital-minded, analytics-driven. And I also believe it's super important that it becomes more cross-functional. I don't like to look at HR just as a silo, but HR really mm -hmm. needs to be connected with the organization, needs to understand the business model, and only by then they can anticipate 
anticipate the talent of tomorrow. Right. I also read uh, some articles in which, you know, uh, most of them had uh, one common thing written for the future of HR, that is the human of HR should become more prominent in the future. So I believe mm -hmm. that's right, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So besides all the, um, the, the tech developments we also see in HR, that, that's actually great because it automates things, which took a lot of time. So there's more time, hopefully, for the human part of HR jobs. Yeah, so that is, a, again, a common belief that the jobs of the future will be more, you know, technologically oriented. So does that mean that machines will completely take over humans at work? How much of a balance between man and machine will the jobs of the future demand, according to you? Yeah, I mean, I already touched that topic before. So mm -hmm. I talked about fusion skills. Mm -hmm. um, I would say neither the companies that focus on purely being the best in technology nor the ones that kind of try to avoid it and stay with whatever they've been doing in the past would be the winners, but um, the combination of both. So yeah, that's it's not like machines will take over humans because somebody needs to teach machines what to do. Mm -hmm. And then um, we know it from the data, there needs to be somebody in the end to interpret the data. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So last question, I have something from our genre that is employee experience and employee engagement. Two terms, but it sounds very similar, but it has a lot of difference in it. So what do you think will matter the most in the jobs of the future, employee experience or employee engagement? So the way I understand it is that employee engagement is in the end what companies need because you need engaged, happy and productive people. And mm. employee experience is a driver that leads to employee mm. engagement. Mm. So I think both are important. I mean, we live in a kind of age of gamification. Everybody wants to be entertained. We talked about Gen Z before. They they think differently, but in the end, they're all humans. They think they are committed to to do something good for for the world or for themselves, or, um, also for the employers. So I guess employee experience is going to be very important to drive employee engagement. So that's one of the big topics I'm assuming, or I'm saying that that HR, but not only HR, but also the leaders, they need to incorporate that into their actions. Because I also hear from, from Gen Z people that they are really uncomfortable with the way they are being managed. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that's also one of the big topics we need to, we need to change. Right. Okay. Uh, so finally, Christian, would you like to give some suggestions uh, to our listeners today? Um, well, my suggestion is to um, not believe that all the changes we are uh, heading to are all going to be negative, but there are also going to be many, many more possibilities, uh, opportunities rather than challenges. And I guess it, if somebody wants to um, wants to develop themselves, it's always good to think about the tech skills, but never ever forget about the soft side of things, the soft skills. And our clients, they really like, when they talk about digital skills, they really, really like to emphasize that it's not about technology, but it's about mindset. So I guess this is something everybody should take along, that digitalization or digital skills are really a whole range of different topics combined together in the perfect package. Okay, great. So, yeah. So what is the best way to reach you? Well, you can reach me on LinkedIn. You can yes. reach me also uh, in many, many congresses. To currently, most of them are uh, virtual, but I'm really easy to reach. I guess the best way is just go on LinkedIn, look for HR Forecast, mm. which is the company I'm heading, or look at, at me directly, and you will uh, you will be able to connect with me, and let's, let's engage. Okay, brilliant. That was a great conversation with you, Christian. Thanks a lot for joining me in the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun for me as well. Thanks for listening to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. Please do subscribe to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and our YouTube channel for new episodes.